Hi, welcome back to uh, this uh, game. So this game, uh, this is part two of uh, Manchet against uh, Sutankan, 1931 in the Christmas Congress. So uh, this is, uh, you know, part two of this series that I like to uh, contribute to the legacy of this very strong uh, female chess grandmaster uh, who's won, uh, become a world champion for 17 years. Uh, and, uh, okay, so so this is it. So in this position, uh, Manchet's last move a knight to e6, and now she's threatening to win the pawn on d4, and also threatening the queen. And uh, that pretty much forces a queen, uh, a certain count, to move his queen away, and he ended up moving his queen to actually uh, queen c3. Okay. Now uh, there's no possibility here. He could probably just take in the pawn on c6, for example. But then that follows up with knight takes d4 by Manchet, and then after a move like queen a6, for example, just to avoid getting uh, crushed by uh, the knight. So this is what can happen. Uh, rook takes e4, uh, x clam leading to bishop c2, check. And after king uh, c1, for example, uh, this is what can happen. Uh, bot can just simply take on e4, and then I uh, looked at a little bit more deeply an analyzing this uh, game. Knight to b3, I'm sorry, knight b3 is also a very strong play, I believe. After king takes c2, queen takes d2, King b1, and I think knight, uh, knight c5 actually works as well for for uh, black. Uh, now so nifty little trick, threatening mate in one, well, queen takes b2, also knight on c5 is threatening to attack the queen on a6 and the um, rook on e4, so we have this uh, fork in play, and uh, if rook e2, uh, which actually defends uh, the position quite well, right, amazingly, rook, rook, uh, rook e2, uh, black still wins actually, uh, looks like great defense, but actually rook takes b2 at clam, leading to king a1, then knight b3 checkmate, so that's a nice, uh, nice combination, you know, that I was able to find, uh, so Pretty cool, I thought. You know, one share when you guys. Uh, okay, so after uh, Queen uh, C3, okay, what happened in the game? Uh, followed through with uh, in this game, uh, Mancha actually chose to uh, decide to trade. You know, by by playing Queen takes D4. So she she had a lot of confidence. Uh, had a lot of confidence in her end game uh, technique and skills. Uh, Want to trade off queens immediately and play for this end game. This is this is not easy to play for an end game advantage, but I think she's basing it on uh, the fact that her peace activity, her initiative is so powerful and strong enough that she can compensate and that she uh, maintain a uh, winning chances. So she's willing to go that route. Now there's another possibility. Uh, you know, you probably could have taken her knight, but she chose not to. Uh, so she went with that route, believing in her technique of end game skills. So after uh, this move, Sutan Khan actually took. So he took on a d4 and thinking and believing that uh, Manchet made a terrible mistake. You know, uh, this position looks uh, doesn't look like it's quite winning for uh, for her her situation. It looks like there's chances that White can actually. Uh, when those pawns that are actually doubled, you know, or not doubled, but I mean isolated on the uh, A and C file, you know, let's say it's possible. Uh, so it's interesting because after knight takes d4, that knight on d4 is protecting c6, and then uh, here again, right? Th this this leads to your tactic, you know, in this position. This F3 is played again. You know, we have this nice little trick. Uh, if uh, bishop takes on a a5, right? For example, rook takes. E4, rook takes E4, bishop C2, and that that wins a piece, and that's a piece, and uh, black should be winning here in this position. But F3 was played to stop this idea, and then here I mentioned just play A4 because uh, that that pawn was uh, under attack. So uh, now um, in this situation, game continued. The bishop F4, Sutton Khan attacks that rook on B8, so forcing. Uh, Manchet to actually have to move the rook, but where, where to? So she decides she's going to play rook b to c8. She's threatening to uh, push that pawn. Looks so like it's going to be pushed, so pass pawns need to be pushed. But in this case, uh, this really isn't a pass pawn, but she's going to find a way to make it work, which is you know, amazing. Uh, amazing foresight and uh, planning in her in her uh, thinking. So the so game continues, right? Bishop d3, okay? Bishop d3, uh, so let's say uh, uh, he wants to trade, uh, Sutan Khan wants to trade and, uh, and take those pawns apart on the uh, queen side and try and win. 
But uh, Varamanchet denies that ability by playing knight to e6, not threatening to win the bishop on f4. And then we see bishop to uh, e5 played in the game just to avoid uh, losing that knight. So centralizing the bishop and protecting uh, the b2 pawn in case it is, gets under attack. And also that 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 uh, those th that bishop on e e5 in particular just uh, it's beautiful, uh, beautifully uh, placed. Yeah, you know, just defend and attack the center. So that's the idea. So um, Manchet plays c5. So looking to advance that pawn. And here, Manchet sees that threat of c4, which will, you know, shut down that bishop or make it extremely. So she play. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Sutan Khan plays uh, bishop b5, attacking that rook, and uh, that pretty much forces rook e to d8. So take over the d file and try and, and attack right away. So in this game, uh, follow the next move, the follow up, uh, the Sutra complaint next is Rook e4. Okay, after uh, this uh, Bishop b5 move. So uh, if uh, she, uh, if Sutra Khan plays Bishop a6, for example, uh, it looks like it's probably a better option because after uh, Rook a8, Bishop b7, Rook a8, 7, Bishop c6, and it just looks like. Um, Sutan Khan would have a, uh, a, a slightly uh, more more better position or make it a little bit more dif difficult for uh, Vermensch to actually uh, play like this. Um, because after, let's say, for example, f6, right, kicking that bishop and after bishop c2, king f2, f7 might be possible in order to set up, uh, you know, planning out the end game uh, s scenarios, uh, end game positions, and that sort of scenario can crop up. In, in this situation, uh, Black might be still playing for the win. Uh, I think Black might have chances. You know, I mentioned still could play for the win, but it, yeah, I think uh, in this situation, it's uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging uh, for sure. Okay, so but in the actual game, um, Sutan Khan did play Bishop A6. He actually played Rook E4, and then uh, we see uh, Knight D4 played. So uh, you know, simply threatening uh, bishop c2, okay, bishop c2 here, threatening to uh, win that rook, threatening to uh, win that bishop on b5. So, uh, so Sutan Khan uh, felt the pressure and the threat and he actually eliminates that threat by taking on uh, d4. But it turns out this actually helps uh, helps facilitate uh, Varamanchik's uh, advantages even more because it actually now creates a pass pawn, c takes d4. And uh, here, this is not looking good for uh, Sutton Khan uh, when there's a pass pawn like that, very powerful one. And uh, the pawn uh, on uh, the D file is protected by the rook on D8 and also the bishop on B3, so that's another key critical factor in this position. And also the rook on C8 is just preventing uh, the white king from ever trying to stop or defend that pass pawn. Or use that use that king to block that pass pawn. So in the game, uh, bishop d2 was played. Okay, just to uh, not allow uh, d3 to be played, and also to protect the c2 uh, square from any checks uh, and winning that rook on e4. So Manchet uh, decides. Okay, since uh, he stopped this plan, let's carry out another plan. Let's attack the b file. Rook b8. Let's go after the king, and that's exactly what happened. So that here, Sutan Khan uh, was afraid about this you know, move, and then decides, okay, king a1. Now um, maybe it's maybe he he would have been done better if he played uh, king c1, for example. Uh, and after like let's say um, yeah, let's say uh, rook here, for example, or yeah, then the king can actually just move forward like that. That probably would have been better for. Uh, Sutton Khan, but instead, you know, he played this move instead, so very interesting. And then uh, the game continues after that, rook b4. So this move, it, it, you know, just protects, uh, creating uh, more extra security and protection on the, the pass pawn on the, the d4 square. Uh, so, and also allows uh, rook, you know, rook lift. So there's a possibility now that rook on the d5 can now swing to uh, b8 or a8. And then maybe a3 and start a possible chat meeting uh, sequence or combination. And uh, here in this situation, uh, in this game, um, Sutan Khan plays rook h2 e1. So he, he goes for Chipo, uh, the back rank uh, mating attack thing. And uh, here, very much, you know, just calmly retreated the bishop to e6 and denies him any, any chances to chat mate her. So um, after this, we see rook e5. 
So very interesting move here, rookie five, and and that move uh, looks like I might, you know, I have plans to move rookie five or rook b uh, b five and try and, and d defend against that type of threat. And here, Van Mencha simply ignored that sort of threat and <laughs> placed a three, which is amazing. A3 move and that move is incredible and the reason why it's incredible is that uh, well okay in the, in the g actual game Susan can play the best move here uh, B3 okay and uh, in the be the best way is actually uh, not this way okay I'm going to show you why this doesn't work but it's a rook A8 and uh, that pretty much forces mate in one well it's gonna put you white can prolong it but it's not gonna be good enough you know it's gonna lead to mate you can try and prolong it with moves that bishop a6 for example but then that leaves his rook takes aces then this you know this it just doesn't work yeah so so okay so that's why uh, b2 is played and then um, after that we see rook takes b3 and uh, this this looks really uh, dire now for uh, black or for white and so black is actually in big trouble now because even in this that show game uh, bishop uh, c4 is played Sutakan tries to play tricks and tries to create uh, as complicated as a position as possible but this position is very straightforward and simple uh, to where uh, any any chess player and you can see that I you know, believe any chess player should be able to uh, realize and recognize that this is a clear-cut win for black so, uh, so very much it just plays rook b2 okay now uh, if, of course this is a big mistake because they're back rank mate okay so you don't want to fall for those tricks so rook b2 just take over the second rank and just make things extremely difficult for white to play especially when uh, you're threatening to checkmate the king on a1 yeah, so you want to check me the king. Uh, so, um, so the game continued. Uh, bishop takes e6 after f takes e6. Rook, uh, rook a5. Okay. So he wants to eliminate uh, the pawn on a3, so he can this uh, a3, so he can uh, uh, attack and win that rook on uh, b2. But uh, Vermentia actually just ignores that pawn, and the reason why is the pass pawn on the d file, so which comes in handy d3. And even after rook takes a3, happening in the game d2, and here. Uh, there's no way out pretty much uh, because after rook d1 rook c2 and the game pretty much over and um, at this point of the position after move 40 Sutan Khan finally resigned so he just you know, accepted the defeat uh, because then he can't stop this uh, for example king a right king b1 then uh, what follows up is simply rook d to c8 threatening uh, rook c1 and he's gonna win the rook, or uh, he's gonna checkmate this king. Uh, basically, this is force, and uh, you're down a piece. Uh, White's in trouble already. You know, he's already lost. So, all right, you guys. Uh, hopefully, you guys actually uh, enjoy uh, or take something out of this uh, uh, this game, because I, I did provide a lot more heavy, in-depth analysis. Uh, I'm gonna try and do more of, of those uh, really detailed. Uh, original analysis of my own I, I don't I'm not using any engine analysis I'm actually using my own uh, thought processes and perspective in my own analysis to uh, analyze uh, great games uh, famous games uh, historical games uh, like this one for example okay all right so you guys uh, like comment subscribe for uh, more chess videos uh, we'll see you guys next time okay stay safe out there and Always remember, you know, be careful uh, during this time of a crisis with COVID-19, okay? Thank you very much. You have a good night. Bye.